Welcome to the 2022 All Candidates Meeting, brought to you in partnership by the Kincardine and District Chamber of Commerce and the Saugeen Shores Chamber of Commerce and broadcast on Rogers TV. My name is Tammy Schneider and I represent the Kincardine Chamber of Commerce. And I'm Terilyn Goldbeck and I represent the Saugeen Shores Chamber of Commerce. There are five candidates running for the position of MPP of Huron-Bruce in the June 2nd election. Lori Hazard, New Democratic Party. Lisa Thompson, Conservative Party. Matthew Kennedy, New Blue Party of Ontario. Matthew Van Inkham, Green Party. Shelley Blackmore, Liberal Party. In tonight's All Candidates meeting, each candidate will be given the opportunity to make a two-minute introductory speech. After introductions, each candidate will be asked to respond to a series of questions with one minute allowed for each response. At the end of the meeting, each candidate will be given two minutes to make a closing statement. We hope you all find the All Candidates meeting informative. Now let's meet the candidates. So it's an honor to be the Ontario Liberal candidate for Huron and Bruce. My husband and I have lived on a farm in Howick Township for over 20 years. As a mother and a grandmother, it's my priority to pass legislation that will protect our environment and build strong communities for future generations. I am a retired principal, having spent 38 years advocating for my students and families in the Avon Maitland District School Board. My experience on the board of directors of the Huron Perth Centre for Youth and Children, and as a foster parent for the Huron Perth United, sorry, Children's Aid Society, and volunteering in leadership roles on the United Way Perth Huron, has given me a unique perspective on the needs of our most vulnerable citizens. I'm running as your candidate because I believe that our Ontario Liberals can deliver the supports and programs desperately needed in rural Ontario. I want to do everything I can to build strong communities in here on Bruce. It's time for a change in rural Ontario. Recognizing that the rural voice is not always heard at Queen's Park, the Ontario Liberals will fight for rural Ontarians and our most vulnerable citizens through our unique rural lens. I have the experience, competence, and leadership skills to be a strong advocate for our riding, and I will listen to your concerns and bring my passion and energy to work for you at Queen's Park. I'd like to give you a little bit about my background before we begin this debate. I was born in Wallaceburg, Ontario, which is a rural community. My dad was a farmer and my mother worked in insurance. Like many families in the 70s, our 100-acre family farm couldn't feed the family and support the family, so my dad finally had to sell the farm and he worked at a local glass factory until he retired. After high school, I trained as a nurse in London, Ontario, and as a nurse, I worked in Moose Factory, which is, was a very small hospital. I worked in the Royal Alec in Edmonton and finally ended my career at the Children's Hospital in London, Ontario. I worked in pediatrics for my entire career. When I left nursing, I became a teacher. I, well, as a nurse, I studied history and got my master's degree and eventually my Bachelor of Education. I taught at Seaforth High School, English and History, where I eventually became a vice principal and then a principal at the Avon Maitland Distance Education Centre. At the end of my career, I worked at the Ministry of Education for the Curriculum and Assessment Policy Branch. I decided to run for a number of reasons, but the main reasons are I was upset about health care, I was upset about education, and I was extremely upset about what happened in long-term care during the pandemic. And I decided that I needed to put my money where my mouth was. So instead of complaining, I decided I was going to do something about it. And that's why I'm your NDP candidate in this election. My name is Matt Kennedy. My wife and I live in Exeter, uh, where we have for the last three years with our dog, Ella. Um, I actually work as a police officer for a major municipal service. Um, and I really became interested in the New Blue Party uh, late last year uh, when I saw what they were starting to do, the team that they were putting together, and I used my investigative skills to look into Jim and Belinda and just what exactly they were building. And I really liked what I saw. Um, I saw a party that was committed to bringing real democracy back at every level of politics. Uh, I saw Jim and Belinda's track record, uh, which I think speaks very plainly for itself. Uh, Belinda has spent years in the Ontario legislature challenging bad legislation, 
standing up for what's right and being a real voice for her constituents. So I really liked what Jim and Belinda were, were building. Um, I decided to join with them um, and I'm pleased to say that uh, after about a year and a half of really hard work, uh, the New Blue Party is running a full slate of candidates in every riding across the province. We really hope to be an alternative for anybody in the province of Ontario who feels that it's time for a change um, and is kind of sick of politics as usual and is ready to bring real democracy and real representation back in our legislature. Hi, I'm Lisa Thompson, PC candidate for Huron Bruce for the provincial 2022 election. And I respectfully ask for your support because I can tell you it has been an absolute honor over the last 10 plus years to represent every community and every person in Huron Bruce at Queens Park. I have the passion, the experience and the absolute purpose for continuing on this journey to ensure that the priorities, not only in the communities of Kincardine and Sogging Shores, but the communities throughout Huron and Bruce are understood and advocated for. And over particularly the last four years, I've been able to bring back investment that truly matters because quite frankly, as I've always said, Huron Bruce matters. Whether it's investment in brand new long-term care facilities like we're going to be experiencing in, in Southampton, through to uh, the construction of a suite for a CT scanner or an amazing outdoor trail connecting Kincardin and Inverhuron, through to the construction and the accommodation to expand daycare and new classrooms, like at St. Anthony's Elementary School. I have worked very, very hard connecting and building relationships with municipalities and community and healthcare organizations to ensure that we continue to be proud of the communities that we call home right here in Huron Bruce. And I look forward to the conversation today. What does your party identify as the most compelling issues facing Ontarians this election? That's a hard one. I think there are several compelling issues. One is affordability, and that includes housing, groceries, gas, anything like that. Another is education. Doug Ford has removed $1.3 billion from the education budget and will continue to remove money. Healthcare is a huge issue. We're 30,000 nurses short, and we have a backlog that will take years to clear if we continue with the Ford government. And I think the other one is the issue around affordable child care. While Ford said that yes, he's made a deal with the federal government. In all reality, it'll be three and a half years before we have affordable childcare in Ontario. So those are the biggest issues. We need to tackle long-term care, we need to tackle health care, we need to tackle education, and we need to tackle affordable childcare. And the NDP has a plan for all of that. Well, I'm gonna say something to you that I don't think any of the other candidates are gonna be talking about in this election. And that is that I think the biggest issue is that we have lost the fundamental trust and faith in the democratic process in this province. People are frustrated. People feel that their elected representatives are no longer actually representing them. They're voting along party lines, regardless of whether that piece of legislation or that policy is good for their constituents. In 2011, the organization Democracy Watch actually cited the low voter turnout in that election, which was only nine points lower than in 2018, as indicative of a crisis in Ontario's democracy. And I would ask you, what's changed in the last 11 years? Democracy Watch at that time actually said that we needed to stop the undemocratic elections and undemocratic government in this province in order to bring back faith and confidence in the system. And that, I think, is the biggest issue that we need to address first. You know, I appreciate that question very much. And I'm hearing it loud and clear as I travel through the communities in Huron Bruce and listen to people when I visit them at the doors. The priority that I'm hearing loud and clear about is the need to build the right conditions to attract investments and growth to ensure that right here at home in Huron Bruce, our children and our grandchildren have a future that is full of opportunities, supported by infrastructure that is very much needed, 
And also we need to be identifying the opportunities to attract new business as well. And so that's why the party that I am proud to represent, the PC Party of Ontario, is committing in this campaign to rebuilding Ontario's economy so we can continue to attract new business. You know, during the Wynne, Del Duca, McGuinty years, we lost 300,000 jobs. And we are going to not only bring those jobs back, but we're going to bring the economic conditions with them. So the Liberal Party completed our most extensive, extensive uh, process in our party's history to reach out to people all across Ontario to find about, out about the issues that mattered most to them when we developed our party platforms. In Huron Bruce, healthcare, cost of living, housing and education are emerging as the top issues that I'm hearing about as I go door to door. Um, from our seniors, it's certainly the cost of living and the long-term care plan that is top of mind, given what happened during COVID. Um, so we have addressed a whole range of issues in our party platform, which we have already released called uh, Making Ontario a Place to Grow. Small businesses are the backbone of the province's economy. What plans do you have to assist small and medium-sized businesses that have been significantly affected by the pandemic? Well, I can tell you small and medium-sized businesses for sure have been affected during the pandemic. And one of the ways that they've been affected the most is by these undemocratic and unconstitutional lockdowns that our government has subjected them to. In order to help these businesses, what we need to first start doing is stop shutting them down, stop forcing them to close their doors. These businesses and the entrepreneurs behind them, they have the human capital, they have the resources, they have the ingenuity to succeed. And we need to get government out of the way of them doing that. Part of the way that we do that is by helping them uh, with the cost that they have. And right now with the price of fuel, um, especially diesel for our farmers, this is a huge increased cost that our current government is doing nothing to address. They've promised a plan you know, at some point in the future but they're not pulling any, any levers or, or utilizing any mechanisms now to try to offer them some relief. The other thing that a new blue government would do is lower the price of electricity um, in order to help these businesses reduce their costs and ultimately increase their productivity and their profit. You know, I appreciate the fact that small business throughout Huron and Bruce really truly is big business. And I salute all of them for finding a way to navigate the pandemic. And I'm pleased with the supports that our government was able to bring for, forward to help them uh, navigate and see their way through. And I have to tell you that there is so much more that we're gonna to continue to focus on. For instance, small businesses are going to be benefiting from our historic investment in broadband and the availability to connect to fiber and high speed in rural and remote communities. And further to that, I can tell you that we are committed to continuing our expansion of natural gas. I can't tell you how many small businesses reached out directly to sincerely thank me for bringing the expansion of natural gas to the municipality of Kincardine and neighboring communities as well. It's badly needed, but I can tell you there's more work to be done and we're going to be listening and addressing those needs going forward. So in here on Bruce, small and medium sized business have been the backbone of our economy. But during the lockdown, uh, during pandemic lockdowns, the, these frequent closures were devastating to this sector. So we will eliminate corporate taxes for small businesses for the next two years to help them uh, recover. Um, we'll also loan an additional $300 million to tens of thousands of small businesses and fund programs that will help them go digital and also reduce regulatory burdens on small businesses. We will also eliminate incorporate, incorporation fees for new businesses and startups, um, that, and also have a, a one-stop 311 type of service to help businesses navigate uh, government supports. Significant for here on Bruce, we're going to help the agri-food sector to export more goods, and for restaurants, we'll eliminate HST on purchases under $20. Thank you. Small businesses are indeed the heart of our communities and among the major employers. Doug Ford failed small businesses when he gave a billion dollars in grants away to businesses that didn't even qualify for his recovery grant. 
we'll do better. We have a small business recovery grant that we're going to immediately enact and it will be over two years and it will be a lot easier for small businesses to ac access that money. The other thing that we're going to do is work with the insurance board and small businesses to find a better insurance deal for small businesses. We're going to make sure that we revisit this, the Commercial Tenancy Act so that small businesses can get a better deal on renting their business area. And the final thing that we're going to do is work on a succession plan so that when you have a small business and you want to leave it to a group of employees or, or your family, we'll make it easier for you to do that. Broadband is so crucial for businesses across the province. What actions would you take to fast track it? Well, I have to share with everyone watching today that it's the PC Party of Ontario that absolutely is committed to seeing everyone have connectivity at the latest by 2025. And you know, we have committed nearly $4 billion to support our commitment to province-wide connectivity, to high-speed internet, to in every community, as I said, by 2025. And we're the party that's getting it done, quite frankly. And I can tell you, during my time as Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, I specifically oversaw over $63 million in provincial investments to, con to connect more homes to high-speed internet in southwestern Ontario. This connectivity situation is an absolute priority to Doug Ford and the PC Party of Ontario. We were, we're getting it done and we look forward to seeing everyone connected at the latest by 2025. So the pandemic has demonstrated the glaring inequality for rural internet services in our riding. Our party believes that internet is as essential as electricity and water to cope in the 20, in a modern society. So there are currently broadband projects happening in rural Ontario through the funding partnership between the federal and provincial governments. Uh, in our farm in Howick, though, we are not on that grid to, to experience that um, fiber optics. And currently we're spending $160 a month on reliable internet. The Ontario Liberals will continue to build on this initiative and guarantee affordable high-speed internet to everyone by 2025. Doug Ford promised in the last election that by 2025, all of Ontario, including, including rural Ontario in the north, would have full access to broadband. That's not been the case. In fact, the Financial Accountability Officer has said that indeed that budget line was cut in half and they've only spent 1% on broadband for Northern and rural Ontario. There were parents during the pandemic who had to take their kids to Tim Hortons to access their online lessons. The NDP has been very clear. We will guarantee broadband in all of Ontario by 2025. Certainly, I think that we need to continue to put uh, government money and grants into expanding broadband access across the province and certainly in this riding. The other thing that we can do is remove the barriers to actually hiring and training those qualified people that our telecom companies need to actually do that. I think our speed of expanding broadband access is not limited by the amount of money that we can throw at it, but it's the actual people on the ground. We need to remove the, the regulations and the barriers from these companies to hiring more people and helping them to be in a position where they can do that. And then ultimately we need to support them by having the people there ready for the jobs. And that is through expanded training, um, incentives for hiring new people into the industry and generally supporting uh, all of the people that are involved in the process to expand that. The other facet to that is affordability. We, mean, we need to make sure not only that people can access broadband, but that they can do it affordably as well. The Ontario Economic Report 2022 found over 60% of businesses are experiencing labour shortages and expect to continue to face them over the next year. How do you plan to address these long-standing shortages that have been worsened by the pandemic? What are your plans to support the workforce of the future? Yeah, as I do main streeting in our small towns and hamlets, um, I'm finding most sectors in Huron Bruce are struggling to find workers. One of the main barriers to attracting and maintaining workers is finding affordable housing. 
So our housing solution uh, plan will help that. Raising minimum wage to $16 an hour and working towards a living wage will enable people to have a better quality of life in our communities. We will need to do a better job of welcoming newcomers to our communities and we will bring in more internationally trained professionals with the skills that we need. Our new arrivals from Ukraine are anxious to find jobs and in their host communities and we will facilitate these types of transitions. We need to build strong, vibrant communities in Huron and Perth <clears throat> that will reflect our liberal values of diversity and inclusion. And we will also encourage co-op education in our high schools to attract, train and retain students in our labour markets. We have an extensive workforce plan and one of them is the fact that we know that we need many, many, many more skilled trades and apprentices. So we're going to do that training right in the community in which you live. Our Green New Democratic Plan is going to create one million green jobs over the next 10 years. And we will make sure that we have enough workers who are trained in their home communities and can work in their home communities. We have an aggressive retrofit program to ensure that buildings are green and we will also be needing workers for that. We're going to work with high schools, we're going to increase shop classes, we're going to increase co-op programs in universities and colleges so that students can learn and get paid at the same time. And we're going to make sure that everyone who wants a job in this area can get it. The other thing that we're going to do is ensure that we have um, people moving in from the area who know that they can work here and get a job in here in Bruce. So once again, I think that this gets back to making sure that the right people are in the right jobs. And I think what we've seen, especially over the last couple decades, is this push for post-secondary education amongst our high school students. The result of that is that we have a lot of overqualified and over-educated people in our society, but they're not actually trained for the jobs that we need them to do. Part of what we can do to address that is to get back to promoting things like the skilled trades and, and other programs right at the high school level to encourage and remove those barriers uh, for those kids who think that they want to pursue that kind of career. The other thing that we can do is through training and apprenticeship grants, we need to promote the hiring of these new employees in these industries uh, with the employers, um, either through some kind of subsidy or grant. And we need to make sure that people are making a living wage while they're training in their desired profession. And government can be helping with all of those things. And frankly, I don't think we're doing a good enough job of it right now. Well, I appreciate the question very much. And I can tell you that, again, it's the PC Party of Ontario that is absolutely committed to ensuring that we have the workforce to meet the demand of employers throughout this province and specifically in Turin Bruce. You know, from international agricultural workers through to internationally trained immigrants, we are working so incredibly hard to reduce the barriers that had grown through decades of, of absolute um, disregard, if you will, to the importance that new workers in Ontario uh, and the opportunities that they bring with them. And with that said, you know, we've been working incredibly hard to introduce programs to help people up, upgrade their skills. And something I'm really particularly proud of in the Concordan area, which spans the riding actually, is the Women in Carpentry program that had just entered its second phase. Our government is working with a municipality, uh, the local 2222, as well as Fanshawe College. That's just one example of how we're bringing more opportunities for workers in Huron Bruce. Supply chain issues have hampered business competitiveness throughout the pandemic. What actions would you take to ensure their resiliency? This is a tough question because a lot of this relies on the federal government, but we know that there are over 650 container ships sitting in the harbour in Vancouver. One of the things that we need to do is ensure that farmers who need fertiliser can get it and they're going to have to find a new place and the NDP government will support them. The other thing we need to do is keep our roads and our borders open. And Doug Ford failed at that while, while we were in the midst of our protest time this spring. But we will do everything we can to keep borders open and roads open. We'll also restore the Northland and the Huron Al and Algoma Railroad so that we can get material to people faster. Finally, we'll do a, a local food supply chain so that local farmers can feed 
the local community so that we don't have to pay as much money to get food from one place to another. So all in all, we'll try and stay as local as we can, but support the community as we move through this end of the pandemic and the supply chain issues. Well, let me first say that supply chain issues are not a new problem. Uh, the trucking industry has for years, in fact, going back 20 years, has been sounding the alarm that they are facing a crisis. We've seen successive governments over the last couple decades fail to address the issues that the trucking associations have raised. We've seen uh, truckers leave the industry, never to return, and we're seeing what I think is an all-time low in terms of interest for people entering that career. Uh, as we've seen an increase in online shopping, we've seen an increase in the number of trucks on our roads. And at the same time, we've been letting the infrastructure that the truckers require um, all across the board in terms of the quality of the roads and the places to stop and grab a bite. Uh, we've seen those diminish and disappear. And so we're making the job harder and harder for truckers. And we're acting surprised that nobody wants to enter the industry or remain in it. There's a lot that we can be doing to support those people working in shipping and logistics. Part of that is uh, encouraging new warehousing as well, because we've been facing a warehousing crisis. You know, um, I have to share with everyone sincerely that one of the spotlights that really caught my eye that the pandemic shone was the spotlight on the supply chain. And you know what? It became very apparent that Doug Ford, our leader of the PC Party of Ontario, was spot on when he said, no longer can Ontario depend on other jurisdictions for goods and services goods and services and food, for example, that we can pre be absolutely proudly developing and manufacturing right here in Ontario and specifically in Huron Bruce. And that's why we are looking from an agri-food perspective to introduce a strategic plan that focuses on food security and stabilizing our local supply chain. And we have so much more work to do. For instance, if re-elected, we're going to be building Ontario's business initiative that will help strengthen our supply chain security and enable small business to do big business throughout this province. Okay, so the, the pandemic has certainly taught us how important it is to have a local uh, domestic supply chain. And so when we're talking to um, businesses, a big part of that problem is storage spaces. Um, people need to store their goods so that they can sell them locally. And so we would help municipalities um, rezone to be able to um, offer storage spaces that are close to the, the areas where people are living. Um, in addition, we really need to uh, have less reliance on, on the, the volatility of the world markets. And so our push towards electricity, electrifying the grid for vehicles and transportation will help us down the road um, to not be so dependent on you know, oil and, and gas and fossil fuel, fuels that are, are so uh, dependent on, on world markets. Housing has been a big issue in the news as of late, and it is critical for businesses to attract and retain talent. Can you talk to us about what you would do to bolster housing in the province? What will you do to address the housing crisis in Huron Bruce? Housing is often talked about as an isolated issue, kind of existing in this vacuum on its own that government needs to tackle through various means. The reality is housing is just um, an indication of the rest of society and how everything else is working. We need to get back to promoting wage growth. We need to get back to promoting economic growth. Our economy has been stagnated, just crawling along for the last few years. We need to get back to growing our small businesses, uh, growing family wealth so that people can afford homes. And we need to address the supply crunch by promoting uh, the building of new homes across the affordability spectrum. Um, and certainly addressing the, the middle class uh, and making sure that there are new homes uh, that those people can afford. Yes, um, this is something that is very, uh, I'm very mindful of. And we have a plan, the PC Party of Ontario, under the leadership of, of our leader, Doug Ford, to deliver on a housing affordability task force target of building 1.5 million homes over the next 10 years. And that includes new homes and attainable homes and affordable homes right here in Huron Bruce as well. You know, just last year alone in 2021, under the right conditions created by our government, we saw homes built faster, 
across this province and more homes than over the last 30 years. And we're some, that's something we're really proud of. And because of that, it made us focus in more. And we introduced more homes for everyone legislation that essentially has three built three pillars, three building pillars. We're gonna reduce red tape to create more homes. We're gonna find partners to work with. And we're going to absolutely work with municipalities and community housing. And we're gonna protect home buyers, homeowners and renters. So the housing crisis is the number one issue I'm hearing about across the riding. We will build 1.5 million new homes over the next 10 years, which would include at least 180, 38,000 of much needed supportive housing um, and also retain and repair thousands of existing homes um, and also tax homes that are currently sitting empty and put a use it or lose it tax on developers land sitting empty. We'll also establish something called the Ontario Home Building Corporation to finance and build affordable homes. We'll also provide municipalities and housing support providers with 100 million per year to promote a housing first approach to end chronic homelessness. We'll bring back rent control to all homes across Ontario to ensure all renters have smaller, more predictable rent increases and provide renters with a path to ownership and creating by creating a legal framework that protects renters to opt into rent to own agreements. We'll work with municipalities to get rid of exclusionary zoning bylaws so that we can build new homes like duplexes and townhouses and triplexes in, within the communities to avoid urban sprawl. We'll also, over their, our first mandate, create 360,000 affordable homes. That includes refurbishing existing ones. We'll also work very closely to ensure that if a person buys a home, they must live in it or else they'll have to pay extra taxes so that we can avoid things like all kinds of speculation. We'll stop rent evictions where landlords evict people so that they can charge the next person more rent. We'll enact the pay what the last person paid program and we'll help 311,000 Ontarians rent. I think the best thing about this program is for first time and new home buyers, we're gonna help them with a 10% down payment on their first home to make sure that they get a home in the community that they want to live in. How will you address rising inflation? You know, inflation is a concern for all of us. And one of the two key drivers of inflation is the price of gasoline and the price of transportation. And that brings me back to supply chain. We need to be manufacturing and producing more right here at home in Ontario to cut down the inflated costs of bringing goods over to Ontario. You know, what a container that once cost $4,000 to come from Asia now costs, you know, anywhere from 20 to $25,000. Business and consumers alike can no longer afford that. And furthermore, the cost under the federal Liberal Party has just gone through the roof for gasoline. And it's our party, the PC Party of Ontario, that understands that the price of gasoline needs to be managed. And that's why we're committed as of July 1st to drop the, the price of gasoline 5.7 cents and drop the price of other fuels 5.3 cents. So inflation is a very complex issue that is that's quite dependent on, on world events and stock, stock market fluctuations. And it is to a certain extent more of a federal issue. But um, because just because the province has very little uh, you know, influence doesn't mean that we can help people weather the storm. And by doing that, we, we need to look at some more affordability issues such as the $16 minimum wage, which we will raise it to immediately, rent controls, $1,000 top up for seniors pensions, um, and also removing interest from student loans. And for those on ODSP um, and Ontario Works, there will be raises as well. ODSP pensions, we plan to raise by 20%. Uh, and OW, um, we will be increasing uh, by 500 per year. So those things should help people, you know, weather inflation uh, during these tough times so that they at least have ways to, to afford them. Anybody who's been to the local grocery store or gas station knows that the prices are going up. We're going to institute a provincial food strategy so that 
food created and developed in this area and grown in this area will stay here to avoid all those prices of shipping. We're going to regulate the price of gas at the pumps so that you're not going to be gouged and it's not going to matter where you live in Ontario. The other big issue is electricity. Doug Ford promised to decrease the price of electricity by 12% and that hasn't happened and in reality he's using 187 billion of our tax dollars to support and bolster up Hydro One. So we need to actually find a way to use less electricity and we're going to support people with a huge grant for a retrofit program to make your houses much more energy efficient. So that will help you with your energy bills. The cheapest energy is the energy you don't use. The price of everything continues to go up, that's for sure. And we're seeing that right now at the pumps. We're also seeing our government offering no relief uh, at the pumps or through energy costs to households and small businesses. One of the first things that New Blue would do is to work to reduce energy costs through uh, taking down the windmills that are costing taxpayers far more money than what we're gaining from. Uh, the other thing that we would do is immediately cut the provincial HST from 13% to 10%. I think also crucially important is that we need to get government out of these responsibilities to the international treaties that only end up costing the small Ontario taxpayer more money while achieving zero or very little actual gain. We have governments right now that are committing themselves to billions of our tax dollars and we are seeing very little benefit of it. We need to remove those international treaties and remove those spending uh, commitments and get back to spending money on people in this province. We know that we can't have a strong business community without a resilient healthcare system. How would you bolster health care in Ontario and what would be your approach to managing COVID to ensure we can sustain our opening and continue to build consumer confidence? And does your party have a pandemic preparedness plan in place? So rural health care is definitely um, challenging and we need a model that reflects our rural reality. So one of the uh, couple of things we're going to do, we will invest in additional health care services and also um, guarantee that people living in rural Ontario have uh, access to a family doctor or nurse practitioner. Um, and we will do this by paying uh, tuition costs for medical and nursing students um, if they agree to settle in our rural areas. We'll repeal Bill 124 and ensure our nurses uh, have a fair wage and have full-time positions. And we'll raise PSW wages to at least $25 an hour. We plan to train and hire 100,000 nurses and doctors and other healthcare workers over the next six years. Our investment in home care of $2 billion annually will relieve some of the pressures on our hospital systems. And yes, we do have a COVID pandemic. Uh, based on an independent inquiry into how it was handled and what we can do better the next time. According to the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives, Ontario has, per capita, the lowest hospital funding, the fewest hospital beds, and the fewest hospital nurses. So we know that we have enough money in the bank right now to clear the backlog, but instead, Doug Ford has said that he's going to use that money to fund private hospitals. We know we can clear that backlog. In terms of COVID preparedness, we will immediately enact an inquiry to look at what we did wrong and what we did right in the pandemic to help prepare us for the next one. We'll immediately pass the Emergency Preparedness and Civil Protection Act so that we can respond quicker in a pandemic. We'll make sure that small businesses have the support they need in a pandemic and we'll create a stockpile of PPE, make sure people have enough sick days, that they can take care of each other during a pandemic and insist that once a year our public health system reports to the legislature on our preparedness for a next pandemic. So once again the case with healthcare is that we've had this impending and growing crisis not just for the last couple of years but for the last few decades and again we've had successive governments completely fail on the requirement to make the necessary investments and make it attractive for people working in the healthcare field to come to this province to work. This is not a new issue. It's one that our government has failed us on for many, many years. What we need to do is expand access to early treatment and preventative treatment for COVID and diseases like it. Uh, those early treatments exist, they're available and they're safe. And people in Ontario have been hurt and uh, in some cases have lost their lives because of the de um, de being denied access to that early treatment. 
The other thing we need to get back to is trying to promote uh, early treatment in all areas and wellness in general. If we can keep people healthy and out of the hospital, that reduces the strain on the system as well. I'm a fan of promoting alternative uh, treatments as well, like naturopaths and adding OHIP coverage for those types of services. You know, the PC party of Ontario is the only party with a plan to stay open. Uh, number one, we saw the need to produce PPE right here at home. And now, two years later, over 90% of all PPE is produced right here in Ontario or across Canada. And we're also prepared to respond to any crisis because we have an amazing frontline health care uh, and everyone that works at that in that front line are absolutely dedicated to the well-being of people in Ontario. And because of that, we are increasing our, uh, our investment an additional $8.3 billion uh, since we were elected. And to build on the 8,600 healthcare workers added to the system since we formed government, we have a plan to invest $230 million to enhance the existing programs so hospitals and healthcare systems throughout this riding have the staff they need to support additional capacity. What are some of the opportunities you see for Huron Bruce Region to grow economically and socially? Well, I think the number one thing that we have to think about is here on Bruce and their major component replacement. As an environmentalist, I know that the only way we're going to get off fossil fuels is to stay with nuclear energy. So we need to support the Bruce and we need to continue with the regeneration of their major components. That'll bring in lots of new people, lots of business people and lots of new employees. The other thing that pandemic taught us is that People don't have to live in downtown Toronto to do their job. So as I'm going around the county, I'm noticing all kinds of people from all over Ontario who are here, and that's only gonna add to our business and our social and our, our cultural community. And finally, the last thing we need to think about is we have a great plan for the NDP with innovation hubs, and Huron Bruce would be the perfect place for someone to come up with an innovative way to save energy and to fit into our Green New Democratic plan. Huron Bruce has everything working for it. What we need more than anything is for government to get out of the way. We have the resources, we have the human capital, we have the creative entrepreneurs, and we have the community. But for the last two years especially, we've had people scared to death by their governments, scared to go and socialize, scared to gather together. We need to get back to promoting that sense of community within our cities and towns. We need to get government out of the way by deregulating certain industries in certain areas to allow those businesses to do what they do best for those small business owners to apply their capital, apply their ingenuity and grow our local economy. We have absolutely everything we need here and here on Bruce. We need a government that's willing to let us untap the potential. I am really, really pleased with the foundation that we have built over the last 10 years. And I can tell you that from investing $21.5 million in infrastructure projects, such as water storage in Lucknow and Teeswater and in the south end of the riding in Hensel, and investing in the expansion of natural gas and refurbishing arenas like in Ripley and Brussels and Huron Park in the South End to building new classroom capacity at St. Anthony's Elementary School or building new long-term care in Southampton. We are investing in programs that will definitely support people who choose to live, grow their families and retire right here in Huron Bruce. I'm so very proud of what we've accomplished thus far, and there's more to do. And I respectfully share with you that in Lisa Thompson, you've got an advocate to bring investment and opportunities back to Huron Bruce. Huron Bruce has a huge potential for both economic and social growth. Um, our West Coast is becoming a very popular tourist destination, and it's really all seasons. People hike, they swim, they fish, uh, they snowmobile, and they four-wheel. Um, and so this means that we have to support our small businesses um, to, uh, to be successful and to remain open. Our, our government will also invest $50 million uh, per year to develop libraries, arenas, recreation complexes, because we need to build vibrant communities so that people want to bring their families and come because they know we have 
good hospitals and good schools and lots of recreation and social opportunities. And we wanna make sure that we welcome newcomers because we have a labor shortage and people will come here um, if they feel that they can be a part of the, an active uh, part of our communities. And now each candidate will present their two minute closing statement. In the 2018 election, we saw over 40% of people in here on Bruce alone decide not to go to the polls and cast their vote. I think that this is largely indicative of the fact that a lot of people have lost faith in our system. They've lost faith in what we hold up to be a democratic process. They know that our elected representatives are not representing what they want and simply voting along party lines. That 40% of our population, if they went out and voted, could determine the next government in this province. I'm encouraging everybody to get back involved into politics, know who you're voting for, and at the end of the day, we need to stop voting for the lesser of all evils, and we need to start voting for the people that we think are actually going to represent us. I believe in New Blue. It's the reason why I made the commitment that I did to run as a candidate. I believe in our founders, Jim and Belinda Karahalios, and their track record. And I'm calling on everybody in here on Bruce to please get informed, research who you're voting for, and utilize your democratic choice to go out and make your vote on June 2nd. Ladies and gentlemen, I have worked incredibly hard over the last 10 years to ensure that Huron Bruce had a respected voice at Queen's Park. And because of that experience and that energy and commitment, I've been able to generate a significant investment back throughout all of our communities right here at home in Huron Bruce. And specifically in Concordia and Sogging Shores, I wanna share with you that I have worked tirelessly to help municipalities, both Concordia and Sogging Shores, realize their priorities. From building a CT scanner suite to cut down travel time for people. And I know that in Sogging Shores, they're fundraising for a CT scanner right now. And I will stand with you every step of the way because one way to combat inflation is to bring services closer to home. And that's what you have in a PC party of Ontario. You have a party that understands we need to have the services such as broadband and goods and infrastructure like natural gas, as well as an amazing quality of life in terms of bringing together communities like the, the Kip Trail between Concordia and Infer, Infer Huron. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been so incredibly proud to represent you at Queen's Park. There's more to do. I'm the person, Lisa Thompson, to get the job done. And I look forward and respectfully ask for your continued support. So I'm really proud to be a member of the Ontario Liberal Party. Um, our party is diverse. Um, we have 63% of our candidates are women. We come from all uh, races, religions, cultures um, across the province. And um, here in Huron Bruce, uh, I believe that I can be a very strong voice and a good advocate for people. As an MPP, it's my job to listen to your concerns and help you solve them through navigation of our various government uh, services. And um, we're, our policy is, is amazing, Ontario, a place to grow, but it's just a starting point. If there's something in that policy that isn't there and you know it's a need in our community, uh, I'll be there to, to listen to your concerns, to take them to Queen's Park, and, um, and to help build Huron Bruce into you know, the amazing um, riding that it is. We have tremendous poten potential here. And uh, I know with the right supports, we, we can be a leader in rural Ontario as a rural community. And I hope on uh, June 2nd, you will um, give me your support because it's time for a change in rural Ontario. It's time for a liberal face um, as the next MPP. Thank you. I think this is the most important election in a generation. And I think we have major decisions that we need to make as individuals, as voters, and as communities. If you want to live in a province where the needs of citizens are more important than the needs of corporations, then you need to vote NDP. If you want to live in a province where you can send your children or grandchildren to school, where they'll be taken care of by teachers and education workers who will teach them to think critically, 
who will treat them individually, and who will make sure that their education prepares them for their future, whatever that future might be, rather than putting them through a cookie cutter, factory style education system, then you need to vote NDP. If you're a senior or you're caring for a senior and you want to live in a dignified, safe, affordable house, you want to age at home with good home care or you have to go to a long-term care home where you know you'll be safe and well cared for in a public system, then you need to vote NDP. And finally, if you want to live your best life in a community of your choice, and in this case it's here on Bruce, you want to live in a home that you can afford, you want to have groceries, you want to be able to pay your bills, you want to be able to send your kids to good schools, and you want to be able to have a little bit money put by at the end of the year to do something like take a vacation, then you need to vote for the NDP. The important part of the NDP platform for me is the fact that it's hopeful. And the slogan of my campaign has been from the very beginning, let's see where hope takes us. In terms of this election, vote NDP and let's see where hope takes us. This concludes the 2022 All Candidates Meeting, brought to you by the Sogging Shores Chamber of Commerce and the Kincardine and District Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for watching this broadcast, and we thank our partners at Rogers TV for making this program available to the public. To learn more about voter eligibility, voter registration, and ways to vote, visit elections.on.ca. Thank you.